It almost makes me feel old to say this, but the grid view in Lightroom is similar to the use of a light table for sorting slides. For those of you who actually remember a time when film photography was the only option available, while the grid view doesn't offer quite the same experience of moving slides around on a light table, it offers a number of advantages in terms of the information you're able to display for your images and the ways you can interact with those images. In this lesson, we'll explore many of the options available with the grid view. Now at the moment, I'm actually working on optimizing one of my images in the develop module. The grid view is only available in the library module. So in theory, I would first need to switch to the library module in order to view a grid display of my images. But in reality, Lightroom offers a couple of options for getting to the grid display quickly. Now, in many cases, you could actually use the film strip in lieu of the grid view. Much like the grid view, the film strip reflects the actual images that are currently available based on the current collection you're looking at and any filters you've applied, for example. However, the grid view does provide several advantages, including the ability to see a grid of images, in other words, multiple rows and columns of images, rather than a single horizontal strip of images. Regardless of which module you're currently working in, you can always get to the grid view by clicking on the Library Grid button to the left side of the film strip. You can also simply press the letter G on the keyboard to access the grid view in the library module. When you use either of these options, you'll automatically be switched to the library module in grid view. If you happen to have already been in the library module, but you were, for example, looking at the loop view to see a single image, you can also switch to the grid view either with the keyboard shortcut, the letter G, or by clicking the grid view icon in the toolbar below the preview area. Also on the toolbar, you'll find some options related to the display of images in the grid view. To help us get a better sense of these options and to appreciate the grid view a little bit more, I'm going to press Shift Tab to hide all of my panels. As you can see, the toolbar is still visible at the bottom of the grid display. In many cases, you'll want to sort your images by a particular criteria. More often than not, I tend to use capture time so that I'm seeing the images in the order they were captured. But you can click the pop-up to choose a variety of options in order to change the sorting of the images in the grid view. You can also click the sort direction button to change the order from ascending to descending and vice versa. At the far right of the toolbar, you'll find a thumbnails slider which allows you to reduce or enlarge the size of the thumbnails displayed in the grid view. And finally, there's a pop-up at the right side of the toolbar that allows you to choose which controls will actually be visible on the toolbar. For example, we can add controls for rating or color label so that those controls are available directly on the toolbar in addition to being available on the images themselves. Now this already gives us quite a bit of flexibility in terms of viewing our images, but there's a lot more control available. If I go up to the View menu and choose View Options to bring up the Library View Options dialog box, I can customize the display of images in the grid view. I'm going to move the Library View Options dialog box over to the side just so that we can see more of the images and get a better sense of the various options that are available. At the moment, I have the Show Grid Extras checkbox turned off, so most of the available options are not displayed. I'm going to turn that checkbox on now so that we can actually see some of the many options available in terms of the information you can display in the grid view. To the right of this checkbox, you'll see that there's a pop-up that allows you to choose between compact cells and expanded cells. As the name implies, compact cells will cause the cells that contain the image thumbnails to be reduced in size. In fact, they'll be reduced in size as much as possible based on which additional options you've chosen to display along with the images. The expanded cells option will create a larger version of these cells so that more information can be displayed. In particular, additional information at the top of the cell. In order to enable us to see more of the options at once, I'm going to leave this option set to expanded cells. In most cases, I actually prefer to work with the compact cells just so that I can see more image area rather than more information. In the options section, the first checkbox determines whether or not clickable items will display only when you mouse over a particular image or at all times. The default is for this option to be turned on. So I'll only see options such as the rotate buttons or the add to quick collection button when I actually mouse over a particular image. Turning this checkbox off, of course, will cause those items to always be available, not only when I mouse over the image. In most cases, I prefer to leave this option turned on just to reduce the amount of clutter in the grid view. 
The next option relates to the display of color labels. If you've assigned color labels to an image, this determines whether or not the actual grid area will be tinted with that color. For example, if I right-click on this image and set the color to red, you can see that because the image is selected, I have a small border of red around the image. If I click on a different image so that this image is no longer selected, the entire cell area will be tinted with that color. Naturally, you can turn this option off if you prefer not to see the color tints. Note that even if you have this tint option turned off, if you're using the compact cells view, the color label will still appear as an icon at the bottom right corner of the thumbnails. In this case, I'll leave the tint turned on and I'll return to the expanded cells option. The final checkbox in the options section determines whether informational tooltips about the image will display when you mouse over a particular image. However, this display will not appear when we have a dialog, so I would have to close this dialog in order to see the tooltip appear. The cell icons section includes additional options for icons to be displayed within the cells for each of the thumbnail images. These include flags that indicate the flag status for images, thumbnail badges that show things such as whether or not an image has been adjusted, unsaved metadata, which would give you an indication that some of the metadata updates that you've applied have not been saved to the actual image file or its sidecar XMP file, and a quick collection marker, which indicates when an image is actually part of a quick collection. The next two sections relate specifically to either the compact view or the expanded view. The reason for this is that in expanded view, you can see more information than is available with the compact view. I'll go ahead and switch to compact view so that we can explore those options first. The first option for compact cells is the display of an index number. These numbers appear at the top left corner of the cell that contains each thumbnail, and they merely reflect the sort order for each image. These do not relate to the actual file name or other attributes of a specific image. We can turn that number on or off as desired. We can also turn on or off the rotation buttons, a top label that allows you to display a particular image attribute above the thumbnail, and a bottom label that allows you to display information below the image. Note that the rating and label are the default here so that we can see any rating or color label information below the image. If you change this option to something else, naturally you won't see the rating and label anymore below the image. I'll now switch back to the expanded view so that we can see the options for expanded cells. The first checkbox allows us to show a header with labels. You can turn that option off, which will reduce the size of the individual cells. With it turned on, you have options to display four pieces of information about your images. You can change all four of these to any values that you personally prefer to see when it comes to reviewing your images. Finally, the expanded cells allow you to display a rating footer. When you have this option turned on, you can also choose whether or not you want to include the color label and the rotation buttons along with the rating option. In this case, I'll switch back to my compact view so that I can see the images in the way I prefer them to be displayed. I can then close my library view options dialog to view my images. Keep in mind that while working in the grid view, there are certain options that are interactive that we can display in the cells for each image. If you have those options turned on, you can change attributes for an image directly within the cell in grid view. For example, in this case, I could assign a star rating or a color label or even rotate an image as needed directly within the grid view. The grid view is incredibly useful not just for browsing your images, but also for sorting and organizing, as well as applying metadata and making other changes to one or more images. Now that you understand the many options for configuring and using the grid view, you'll be able to customize this view to your liking, and you'll also be able to find specific images more quickly.